They initially assumed it was nothing more than another chunk of ancient debris wandering in from the void. A stray visitor from interstellar space, harmless, quiet, drifting toward the inner solar system. But then the James Webb Space Telescope captured something no one had imagined possible. A coma burning a deep, unsettling red, so perfectly symmetrical it defied every natural explanation. No water vapor. No tail. None of the familiar chemistry of a comet. Only carbon dioxide venting with machine-like regularity. And now scientists are murmuring a question they never thought they'd dare voice. What if this object isn't a comet at all? The last time astronomy faced something this bizarre, it was Oumuamua, and that already shattered the field's assumptions. But 3i Atlas doesn't just push the boundaries, it completely breaks them. And with every hour it continues its approach, the implications grow darker. What Webb has verified about this object is more than unsettling. It's alarming, and not even NASA appears prepared for what's coming. From its first detection, 3i Atlas defied every cometary model. Instead of a chaotic halo of vapor, rock fragments, and water ice, Webb detected something eerily different, a massive spherical envelope of gas, almost as wide as the distance between Earth and the Moon, expanding in a near-perfect sphere. The hue wasn't icy blue or faint white, it glowed like a red lantern suspended in space. And the strangest part? That halo contained only CO2. At this distance from the Sun, water should dominate completely. Every comet we've ever monitored begins shedding water first, erupting in plumes visible even through amateur telescopes. But Atlas ignored those rules. No explosive jets. No violent eruptions. No chaotic boiling. Just a slow, consistent exhale of carbon dioxide, as if something had flipped on a controlled valve and was venting with deliberate precision. When astronomers analyzed the object's nucleus, the solid body inside the coma, the results were spine-chilling. Initial Hubble estimates suggested a tiny core, maybe a few hundred meters across. But when Webb and SphereX scanned it in the infrared, the reflected intensity didn't match those dimensions at all. Model after model pointed to a nucleus closer to 46 kilometers wide, larger than the majority of cataloged comets. A body of that size should have distorted background starlight, yet somehow it remained hidden until this year. Why? Some researchers suggested the brightness came from particles in the coma instead of the core itself. That theory collapsed fast. The reflectivity curve was too smooth, uniform, consistent, almost polished. A natural object scatters light unevenly. This one reflected light as though engineered, as though its surface had been crafted. Every comet speaks through its chemistry, and that voice is almost always water. As they warm, they exhale vapor and erupting tails. But 3i Atlas has been disturbingly mute. Spectroscopy confirms that frozen water exists beneath its crust, ready to sublimate, but it simply doesn't. Only about 4.5 kilograms of water escape each second, barely a fraction of what's expected. Some theories propose that the intense CO2 flow cools the surface by insulating it. Others argue the ice lies too deep to be reached by sunlight. But even those explanations fail to justify the stability. No bursts. No spikes. No sudden releases. Just the same regulated flow of carbon dioxide, unchanging, like a system running on a timer. Which raises the unsettling question, what if this lack of water isn't accidental? What if it's designed? If an object violates every rule of comet behavior, why isn't it the biggest news story on Earth? When Oumuamua appeared in 2017, the world erupted with speculation. Scientists openly debated whether it was technology. But with 3i Atlas? Silence. NASA's SphereX mission detected the red coma, the missing water, the unnatural reflectivity, but no announcements followed. No press briefings. Not even a casual social media mention. The findings were buried in a forgotten technical update like they didn't matter at all. Some dismiss this as bureaucracy. Others say it's a desire to avoid sensationalism. But more experts are starting to whisper what many already suspect. This silence feels familiar. It feels controlled. And if NASA isn't speaking, perhaps it's because they're guarding something they don't want the public to panic about. And the weirdness doesn't end with its chemistry. 3i Atlas moves in ways no comet should. Its trajectory isn't just interstellar, it's impossibly deliberate. Normal comets wander in after gravitational nudges. They don't choose their paths. 
But Atlas glides on a route so carefully tuned it brushes close enough to planets and solar radiation to gather information, yet never strays into destabilizing zones. When astronomers reversed its motion to model its incoming path, they found unmistakable signs of mid-course adjustments, tiny directional corrections, fractions of a degree, far too precise for a natural object. Such corrections require power, guidance, and intent. This object isn't drifting through our solar system. It appears to be piloting its journey. And when the path was compared to old sky records, some researchers discovered eerie similarities, suggesting an object of the same description may have approached Earth in ancient times, lost to history as misidentified stars or recorded heavenly omens. As if this wasn't its first arrival. As if it knows where it's going. While Webb examined the chemical structure within the coma, it uncovered another disturbing anomaly. Embedded in the spectral fingerprint were complex organic molecules, common enough in space, but arranged in a repeating pattern sequence. Methanol. Formaldehyde. Carbon monoxide. Not scattered randomly, but layered in a rhythm that mirrored the folding behavior of proteins on Earth. No one is claiming the object is alive. But this structured layering suggests purpose, perhaps a biological payload. Some fringe thinkers, now gaining reluctant attention, warn that these molecules might be designed for atmospheric release, meant to interact with a planet's biosphere. In other words, a delivery system. And if Earth meets the right conditions when Atlas passes, we might not have decades. We may have months. Then came the signal. On a calm July morning, the SETI Institute detected a narrowband pulse, not from deep space, but from inside the solar system, somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. It repeated with machine-like rhythm sounding, when converted, like a rotating synthetic beacon, the sort used in early radar. SETI should have dismissed it as interference. But they couldn't. The signal shifted in perfect sync with 3i Atlas. As the object moved, the signal moved with it. For 17 minutes, the tone pulsed across multiple observatories. Then it vanished. When SETI attempted a triangulation sweep, their systems crashed, hard. Log files erased, antenna arrays misaligned, backups corrupted. Officially, it was a weather-related error. Unofficially, every engineer involved is now under non-disclosure agreements. A few have quit. One was hospitalized after claiming he kept hearing the beacon in his sleep. James Webb's infrared instruments can detect faint warmth from the earliest galaxies. But when it focused on the nucleus of 3i Atlas, the data didn't show heat, cold, or fluctuation. Instead, it returned an impossible reading, a perfectly flat thermal line, absolute stability. A signature not of natural matter, but of something masking its true temperature entirely. This shouldn't be possible. Everything drifting through space emits at least a trace of infrared heat. But 3i Atlas gave off none. It didn't glow, didn't absorb, didn't scatter radiation. It behaved as if it wasn't part of our thermal universe at all, as if its core existed inside a different temperature domain entirely. That single impossibility forced a full system recheck, including data from ESA's solar orbiter. Their confirmation only deepened the crisis. The heart of the object showed no heat signature, no absorption bands, not even when blasted by solar-charged particles. The only explanation left was the one no one wanted. The center of 3i Atlas is made of something unknown, something invisible to every instrument we have. A cloak. A hollow. A projection. A facade. Some researchers now believe the object we're seeing may just be an outer casing, a kind of shell, hiding what's actually there behind frequencies we haven't learned to detect. Something that's been observing us long before we had the means to observe back. When analysts enhanced images of the coma with Fourier transforms and multispectrum filters, they found something chilling inside the supposedly random gas plume, a repeated fractal architecture. Not sporadically. Not occasionally. In every recorded frame across 17 days. It wasn't decoration. It was ordered. Precise. Recursively structured, as if the gas cloud were acting as a visual algorithm carrying encoded information. One group compared the fractal geometry to known mathematical constants. The matches were disturbing, golden ratio spirals, Fibonacci progressions, ratios embedded in both natural growth and human cognition. Was this an interstellar signature? A test? A lore? Or something far stranger? A mode of communication that only a sufficiently evolved mind could interpret? Whatever the intent, 
The message wasn't crafted for our machines. It was crafted for our awareness. As more data circulated to bioinformatics teams, a startling match emerged. Molecular arrangements in the carbon-heavy particles emitted by the object aligned uncannily with structures found in mitochondrial DNA, especially segments tied to aging and neural development. That correlation spawned an explosive hypothesis. 3i Atlas might be carrying resonant. Biological code. Not to infect. Not to rewrite. But to activate dormant genomic instructions. What if the object isn't delivering something foreign, but awakening something ancient? What if human evolution didn't drift, it waited? What if 3i Atlas is the cosmic metronome? The implications are staggering. This wouldn't be contact. This would be reconnection. A trigger pulled from light years away, one that could accelerate cognition, memory, even consciousness or extinguish all of it. Across the planet, observatories recorded another impossibility, a delay between the comet's light output and the gravitational effect it should produce. This cannot happen. At this scale, gravity is effectively immediate. But refined models exposed a hidden companion, an unseen mass trailing 312,000 kilometers behind the object. This gravitational phantom was invisible across the spectrum. No thermal emission, no reflectivity, no radio echo. But its pull was measurable. It bent solar particles, distorted nearby tails, and subtly lensed distant stars. The mass equaled that of a small asteroid, but behaved with perfect silence. Some theorists now argue it may be the true visitor, a probe, a parasite, or the real atlas itself, while the luminous body ahead is merely a decoy, an elaborate frontage. If so, everything we've observed is only the curtain, and what's actually approaching remains hidden behind it. Two weeks ago, a leaked memo from a major aerospace defense contractor hinted that the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs received a confidential transmission from NASA, ESA, and CNSA. The message allegedly confirmed that Object 3I Atlas no longer behaves under known celestial dynamics and recommended forming a multinational response team for coordinated planetary surveillance. Officials denied the leak. They wiped it from public record. But satellite network logs showed what couldn't be erased, a spike of encrypted traffic across all orbital telescopes and deep space arrays, followed by a synchronized firmware update. Something that usually takes months happened worldwide in under 40 hours. Why the rush? Why the silence? Why upgrade every eye on the sky at the same moment? And what exactly needed to be tracked or concealed? While studying Atlas's CO2 venting cycles, ESA and NASA scientists noticed an underlying pulse in the emission timing, a rhythm. When analyzed, the spacing between bursts mapped onto Planck time intervals once logarithmically scaled. Planck time, the smallest meaningful tick of the universe. When that rhythm was compared to atomic clock arrays in Geneva, Tokyo, and Boulder, micro-desynchronizations began to appear. As though something in the object's frequency was subtly warping local space-time, too faint for casual detection, but persistent enough to disrupt global timekeeping. Soon civilian astronomers reported clocks skipping fractions of a beat. Drone fleets lost synchronization. A handful of military systems logged time-lapse errors. If 3i Atlas can distort time from millions of kilometers away, what happens when it draws closer? Despite the coma's active CO2 plumes, James Webb detected the impossible. The core temperature had fallen to around 40 Kelvin, nearly absolute zero. A core that cold cannot sustain outgassing. And yet it does. Worse, the frigid region was perfectly spherical with a razor-sharp boundary, no thermal gradient at all. Only deliberate regulation can create such a profile. Some researchers now suspect the object houses a cryogenic containment chamber, possibly storing something fragile, valuable, or alive. If Atlas is transporting biological or technological material through deep space, maintaining extreme cold until arrival, then the comet isn't a rock. It's a delivery system. And if it's cryogenic, it's meant to thaw. The Very Large Telescope in Chile performed high-speed photometric imaging as 3i Atlas drifted behind background stars a standard method for determining an object's shape. But the result was unprecedented, light echoes, lingering shadows and reflections appearing even after the object passed. These echoes didn't fade normally. They persisted for days, shifting subtly with Earth's motion. They remained in place despite filter changes and camera swaps. It appeared as though Atlas was leaving temporal footprints, as if multiple versions of it were being seen from different instants. 
A Harvard quantum optics group now suggests Atlas may not be bound to linear time, and the echoes might be glimpses of the object existing in several moments simultaneously, only one of which intersects ours. After months of combing databases, a renegade coalition of mythologists and astrophysicists noticed something remarkable. Myths across civilizations, Sumerian, Dogon Maya, Indus Valley, describe a returning star appearing every 13 human lifetimes, bearing the mirror that sees the world's soul. The descriptions mirror modern data, the red shimmer, the symmetrical halo, the silent traversal. The ancients mentioned rituals of stillness during its appearance, as if anticipating a message or awaiting judgment. Once dismissed as folklore, these texts are now being re-examined by SETI historians. Because if 3i Atlas isn't a comet but a sensor, a watcher, or a harbinger perhaps ancient cultures had already encountered it. And if they prepared for its arrival, perhaps we should as well. After every image, pulse, shadow, and anomaly the James Webb Telescope has recorded, one conclusion is becoming unavoidable. 3i Atlas is not merely passing through. It is responding. Its timing, its architecture, its silence, they're too intentional to dismiss. It didn't appear by chance. It returned on schedule. It breaks our physical laws because it was never built to follow them. And maybe neither were we. Perhaps we are the anomaly it's come to study, to evaluate, or to awaken. Governments may pretend it's just another icy wanderer. Agencies may issue calm statements. But the instruments tell a different story. The patterns are undeniable. And the effects already ripple through our atmosphere, our technology, our memories, even our origins. Because 3i Atlas doesn't merely reflect sunlight. It reflects us. So next time you lift your eyes skyward and feel something looking back, don't turn away. You may not be seeing a comet. You may be staring into the mirror of our beginning or our conclusion.